from another election day here. Yes. In Acadiana. Mm-hmm. And what did I? I think I have the short straw this time. I think I'll be doing the coverage on the Saturday night. So while Bernie's whatever making our hot toddies and <laughs> blue apron <laughs> at her house. <laughs> She, if I'm it's gonna, one o'clock in the morning, you better believe it. Hot toddies and blue apron. That is the Bernadette Lee diet right there. Um, I'll be here. Stop laughing, funny boy. <laughs> it sounds, it, I'll be honest. It sounds like a party. <laughs> you know, Bernie, she has like the last remaining like little cocktail cart sitting at the end of her island in her kitchen just with, with it ready. It's actually not a cart. However, it is a liquor cabinet, but it comes out and it does look like a cart. <laughs> Do you have a lazy there, Susan on that cart? No, but I'll tell you, the leather that's right on top of that little thing, that tray thing, boy, that's got a lot. If that sucker could talk, okay? <laughs> Justin Santana joins us from Lafayette Parish Schools. Um <sighs> A little board member with Lafayette Parish uh, School System. Mm-hmm. Good morning. How's it going? I'm fine. How are you guys? Good talking to you. Mm-hmm. Um, How's the road show of uh, let me tell you about our tax thing? I, it's it's doing very well. You know, we're going mm-hmm. to all the different schools that are on the project list for mm-hmm. the uh, sales tax. There are 12 schools, 11 elementary schools. And mm-hmm. um, we're just we had a really nice turnout at Karen Crow Heights Elementary School last week. And, um, you know, just doing our best to, to make the case to the taxpayers of Lafayette Parish. Half cent, 10 years. But is it really going to be dedicated? Completely dedicated. Okay. You know, the, but it, does it spell that out? Absolutely. So uh, in the in the ballot language, when you go in the voter booth on mm-hmm. April 29th, you're going to see uh, you know a bunch of a bunch of attorney talk, and yeah. it says about uh, consolidated school district number one, Lafayette Parish, mm-hmm. and then it says uh, can be used for any lawful purpose, including acquiring playgrounds, lands, improvements, buildings. Subject to the limitations of Resolution 01-17-1896, which is a resolution the school board adopted on the same night we called the election. Mm-hmm. In that resolution is the list of projects that we are proposing to take care of, mm-hmm. which are removing the temporary classrooms from 11 elementary schools mm-hmm. and Lafayette High School. Mm-hmm. And before we proposed this, we we did some research and we found an attorney general's opinion, uh, which is 03-313, uh, I think. And it says that... Um, when you reference specific documents in the ballot language that is in the voter booth, that document becomes binding should the voters adopt the proposition. So we feel very comfortable that the money is completely dedicated to mm-hmm. portable buildings and maintenance and can be used on nothing else. So, so why did it say the yeah. part about the lands, though? Because we have because that's all in, that's all involved in 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 building schools. Right. So Prairie Elementary School we're, mm-hmm. we're proposing to replace very, very likely. Not going to say 100%, but very, very likely we're going to build it somewhere else. Okay. And so we're going to have to figure You'll out. You'll have to acquire the land. We have to, be able to acquire get the land. To, so to that's build really it. that's really kind of just some legal that needs to be in there to describe what the school board does. Sure. So so of course it says any lawful use mm-hmm. subject to the limitations of resolution 01-17-18. And in that resolution is specifically about your absolutely buildings. absolutely. I mean the, the the subject of the limitations modifies any lawful use. I, I I tried to diagram the sentence one day. Have you ever tried to diagram something that an attorney writes? No. It's exceptionally difficult. I would imagine. <laughs> but but the subject to the limitations really modifies the any lawful use. And that is the language that dedicates the money. Okay. You know, a lot of times I think people, you know, look at tax and say, well, I don't want any new taxes. I don't want any new taxes. But at mm-hmm. the same time, you know, your kids, I'm kind of in a similar situation, go to a public school and you want them to have the best experience. There was some video. Um, our news partners over at KTC did a story about two weeks ago where you see a kid walking outside of one of these temporary buildings and he is completely soaked. I'm not talking his shoulders have a couple of raindrops because he had to walk three feet in the rain. He's soaked in the rain, and this is something I think that a lot of people may not realize if your student is not dealing with this. That's true. Or you don't know about it, but as soon as it is your student, how do you expect them to deal with this? I mean, two people under an umbrella, they're still getting wet, um, and this is one of the biggest parts. I mean, it's very it's very obvious, I think, that part, why this is at least needed. Sure, I, and, you know, I really appreciate KATC covering that, and uh, the story interviews two of the children that go to Karen Crow Heights Elementary and one of the teachers – that teach in this portable building, and they they go through their daily experience about how it's difficult to hear the teacher when it rains, or maybe if it's too windy, they have to go inside to where it's a safer structure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, I, I think unfortunately the Butler building situation, which I've told you before, in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with the Butler building, but you're talking about fewer bathrooms, narrower hallways, smaller cafeterias. The the core facility was not designed to handle that many students, mm-hmm. and so. 
the the overall situation I think needs to be rectified. And unfortunately, I think it's become normalized because for so long in Lafayette Parish, that's what we've had. Right. Sure. I mean, Bernie, you can you can look at me yep. right now and you can say I learned in a Butler building. Yep. Okay. Now let me ask you this. Sure. People are constantly asking this still to this day because maybe they haven't been to a meeting or whatever. But it's the obvious question. It's a half penny sales tax. How much is it going to generate, and how come you can't just get it out of the budget now? $23.7 million per year mm -hmm. right now is what a half cent generates in Lafayette Parish. Mm -hmm. um, and we can certainly, I mean, look, if we wanted to cut, 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 we could do it. But $23.7 million, what that's really going to mean is really limiting bus service to schools of choice and things like that. We We are forced by state and federal mandate to use a lot of the money we get on unfunded things that they dictate we spend money on, such as retiree health benefits. In 2011, our health insurance budget was $34 million. This year, it's $50 million. So just in the last five years, wow. we are now $17 million, $16 million a year more on just health, just health insurance. That's, mm -hmm. that's nothing else. Not to, not to mention the, the rise in, in salaries and, and everything else. So, I mean, it's, it would be a drastically different school system today. And, and you know, that's plan B. I mean, it, this is all this is at the end of the day is an opportunity for the voters of Lafayette Parish to tell us what they want their school system to, to look like. Do they want it to look like it is today plus new wings on several campuses? Or do they want it to look like it is today less some services? Okay. That hmm. makes sense. I mean, that's kind of a side of it that we haven't heard given the rise in health care costs, the rise in retiree benefits, especially like that. Um, 